Crusher here. I'm glad you're back for part two of my sit down with Yamaso. Let's jump right into it. And he's Satoshi it. and guys, man. Satoshi, yeah, yeah. I mean, he just runs the mill of the lightweight guys. Yep. And it doesn't matter what they do. Yep. We were talking about this a little bit earlier. It doesn't matter if he pulls. Yep. He's going to sweep and he's going to hustle for it too. He's going to go on the spider guard uh, attack. Yep. He's going to hustle for it. If they pull first, he'll just pass and he'll just go left and right and he'll, yep. he'll make it happen. <laughs> And I love that style. Mm -hmm. uh, another guy's blue chest. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter where he falls, mm -hmm. he's always on his grind. I mm -hmm. love this. I mm -hmm. love that. Uh, no stalling. You know, back in the days, you had uh, guys that went on points and advantages, and they were content with that. They're like, oh, yeah, I got a world championship off of an advantage, correct decision. Mm -hmm. And I want to be known for going out there and fighting and showing, um, showing that you can have very active jujitsu and still yet be uh, very, very productive. Yeah. Good. That's good. Big influences in my game currently. That's awesome. So, what do you think about the recent IBJJF changes? Like, for example, performance enhancing drugs, like the testing for that. Yeah, man. Uh, look, I uh, I would like I would like our, our sport and, and uh, not just the sport. I would like an art that we love mm -hmm. to go in that direction. Look, I mean, uh, there's two dynamics here. You can you can have a recreational practitioner dynamic, mm -hmm. and you could have the sport dynamic, and you can kind of mix both. And I think it's imperative that uh, us as instructors, we teach uh, good, healthy habits. And I'm sorry, performance enhancing drugs are not, uh, are not good for you. Plain and simple, they're not good for you. Uh, the, the, health, the health benefits are far, you know, they're, they're, they're far more destructive. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the, uh, the advantages are, are temporary. Right. And, it's, and, and the damage that's done, the long-term damage, is far more destructive than the, the temporary benefits. So, um, Man, I, I, I agree I, I agree with the movement that IBJJF is taking. I would like to see from the IBJJF, some of the IBJJF, call me, <laughs> we can talk. Uh, I think that uh, somebody from the IBJJF, uh, they should be doing all podiumers, first, second, and double thirds. All podiumers got to go and take the test, period. You know, uh, <laughs> I, I agree uh, in wholeheartedly in Kyle Terrace's plight. Uh, I'm glad that the, the IBJJF finally started complying. And this is, I mean, in order for us to go from amateur to a professional sport, mm -hmm. uh, we definitely have to take this direction. So I'm really hyped about this direction. I'm hoping next year they start implementing a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And um, I'd like to see where this heads in the future. Man. We, we got we to clean the slate, even the playing field. Yeah, Look, yeah. I mean, uh, guys, like, guys like me that don't get to train four or five times a day, mm -hmm. like some people. You know, I train really hard. Mm -hmm. I'm very fortunate because I do what I, I love for a living. But man, I mean, I... If I was on a PD or something like that, I'm sure I could I could do more. Yeah, you could and recover that, more quickly. That's right. That's right. And it could it could it definitely it definitely uh, breaks that playing field up. You know, mm -hmm. I like to see everybody playing with the same set of rules. Okay. PEDs, are, in my opinion, they, they, need, they need to be shut out. I want to stick with the IBJJF. Uh, recently, uh, there's been a lot of talk uh, from people about the IBJJF and their favoritism, quote unquote. Towards Brazilians, yeah. and you've often been the the quote unquote voice of reason. You know, when I jump online, you got people yelling and screaming. IBJJF is awful. They do, and I've seen you take a public stand and be the voice of reason. I want to give you a chance to speak to that a little bit. Look, uh, the reason being is that I embrace not only Brazilian Jiu Jitsu but Brazilian culture, as I do many other things that I'm learning. Um, I consider myself a student of many cultures and of many places. I mean, I've traveled a lot. I've been very thankful. Uh, and fortunate to be able to travel the world, and I picked up little things from from a bunch of different places. You know, uh, if you ever get to sit down and, and talk to me, guys, I mean, I, I'll talk, I'll shoot, I'll shoot the shit about anything, religion, whatever, whatever comes out. And a lot of these things are from my travels, places that I go. And Brazilian Jiu Jitsu was just the same. I I love the Brazilian culture. You know, I myself am a Puerto Rican and Italian. So uh, for me to hear people isolating certain groups. Uh, you know, and this goes on both ends of the spectrum. This goes from the Brazilian trying to uh, isolate negatively uh, some uh, the, the American crowd, the Japanese crowd, or whatever, and vice versa. The American crowd trying to oppress and isolate uh, a whole group of people because of maybe the actions of a certain few is incorrect. You can't be doing that, yeah. man. We live in a time now where you know that type of that type of bias and that type of racism. I'm sorry, it's racism. Uh, it's a basic point. Is not accepted mm -hmm. for me. It's not accepted. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I mean, well, I'm Puerto Rican at the time. We're yeah. mixed. Every, we have everything in yeah. us, right? So uh, to see this type of stuff happening for me is a, is a great injustice. And if I can use my name, if I, in, in any way, shape, or form, 
to moderate these two groups mm-hmm. and maybe bring them to a point where you know, you know, that voice of reason will help maybe you know garner up some some other support from other groups mm-hmm. and uh, dissipate a little bit these, this negativity at both extremes. Mm-hmm. Then I'll do whatever it takes, you know, and I'll get on. I'll get online. I don't I don't care if, if uh, my marketing guy who mm-hmm. been. Ruben Avila, he's gonna hate me for this, but uh, I don't care. I don't care if he says, "Hey, no, this is a lot of drama." I'm gonna say, "You know what? I don't give a shit." It's better for me to to show the world that that I'm not just tolerant, but I'm accepting. Mm-hmm. I'm accepting all these groups than than just to stay quiet and try to, you know, maintain right. pretenses. You know, right. right. To try and, and get one group cool with me or not. Yeah. So man, I don't I don't agree with that. It's just a bunch of garbage. You know. Uh, with all honesty, I was talking to somebody uh, very recently about this, the difference uh, between uh, this group that's, that's that's pushing the American Jiu-Jitsu, yeah. and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, yeah. and Japanese Jiu-Jitsu. For me, man, it's become Jiu-Jitsu now. Mm. There's so many worldwide practitioners now that it can no longer be recognized, in my humble opinion, as uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. It is an origin, mm-hmm. right, as mm-hmm. Judo is uh, in Japan, Japan yeah. right? But everybody that practices judo in the world calls it what? Judo. Judo, right, 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 right. Right? Very right. simple. Yeah. So, jiu-jitsu has transcended that now. Mm-hmm. We're at a point where it's no longer Brazilian. I mean, we have American champions coming through. Rafael Lovato is a beast. Mm-hmm. Judy Torres is also a beast. We have Bill Cooper. These mm-hmm. guys are medalists at the adult world. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm putting in work, too, now in the Masters. I just want pans and stuff. So, how can you say that, you know, mm-hmm. it's Brazilian jiu-jitsu anymore? Mm-hmm. You can't do that. Yeah. You, know, you can't do that. You just got to, you know, now it's jiu-jitsu, just like judo is judo, mm-hmm. and we all practice the same art, we love the same art, and we all need to come together and, and, and quit this negativity, you know, this, this extreme, this is part of the negative, negativity, you got to stay away from this stuff all together. Yeah. I mean, and speaking of jiu-jitsu, lots of people have talked about the 50-50 guard, we've talked about this a little in the butt scoot fights, uh, where people are fencing for bare bolos, and yeah, yeah. the impact on jiu-jitsu as a spectator sport. What are your thoughts on that? This is a this is an interesting thing, man. I think as uh, also as instructors, it's it's uh, it's also really important for us to stay um, stay on the developments of jiu mm-hmm. uh, This is a direction our sport is taking. The sport aspect of jiu is taking. This is not self defense. <laughs> I'm not talking self defense, but the sport is taking uh, is gravitating towards this, especially for the lighter guys. It's gravitating towards this. First, it was the problems with people pulling guard. I don't know if you guys remember this. Back in the days, it was, it was ah, everybody needs to stay standing. Everybody needs right. to do judo or wrestling. Then it was the tabooish footlocks. Right. I right? remember. I don't know I if remember. You guys people remember. used to boo. Oh, yeah. They yeah. used to boo, man. Yeah. Toe holes, knee bars, yeah. all this stuff. Oh, man. This is, this, uh, this is not liked by right. many members of the community. But it was accepted. It was embraced. And it was assimilated. Uh, then, uh, you know, most recently came the 50-50 yard. And now, as of late, is that double guard. Um, man, look, it's very simple. These guys are playing a sport. They're playing a game. Mm-hmm. And they're going to find ways around the rules and movements. And it's our job as, a, as an instructor to bring that knowledge to our students and the people around us. That's our jobs. Mm-hmm. And I think these people are getting pissed off because they're not staying a, a, ahead of those, those evolution, right? They're getting, they're, they're, they're getting left behind, mm-hmm. right? And they're like, ah, this is garbage because in reality, I don't know anything about it. I don't know my foot from my ass. And I don't want to teach it to you. <laughs> It's very simple. Uh, man, if this, is, if this is what's going on in the featherweight divisions, teach double guard pulling. Mm-hmm. There you go. Teach them that one person that comes up gets the advantage. Teach them, teach them barren bowls. Teach them leg locks. Mm-hmm. Teach them these type of things because they're going to gravitate to these things. Mm-hmm. This is the game. We're playing by a set of rules in a game. And this is a sport jiu-jitsu. Learn that stuff. Man. I mean, look, I'm 32, and I'm, I'm playing the barren bowl game. I'm playing barren bowls and 50s and leg locks, toe holds. Something very different than what I had to before, mm-hmm. uh, but given the chance, you get me on top, and I'll pass. I'll use all the new stuff, leg dragging and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And and I didn't I didn't stay in that same frame of mind with the techniques that were back when I started using. Right. My game these last three years has changed dramatically. Evolved. It's it's evolved. It's yeah. evolved. And that's what we all have to do. We all have to evolve. So my answer to this question is: Instructors, quit being lazy. Learn the double guard pull. <laughs> Learn some of those leg locks. Learn some of those barren bowls, the alphas, the you know, the, the, all this stuff needs to needs to needs to be taught. It needs to be uh, uh, dissected. Mm-hmm. It needs to be meticulously assessed and presented to the to the students in a universal fashion, so everybody can kind of pick it up. But obviously, place an emphasis for the lighter weight guys that can definitely take advantage of these things and bring the information out there to the students. This is important. This is part of the development of our sport. 
uh, you have a recent example in Keenan and the Meow brothers. Uh, man, they, they, they want this position aggressively. Now, I'm not in agreement with double guard pulling and then hanging out there the whole round. Mm -hmm. I understand this is a strategy, but I don't agree with this. But their most recent uh, battle at Abu Dhabi, there was no justification in my mind for DQ. That was criminal. Criminal. These guys were working hard. Both Keenan and Meow were, were working really hard. Um, they were hustling on toe holds mm -hmm. and the like, and they were working their positions. I saw them as being very active. I saw other matches, mm -hmm. with all honesty, that were a lot less active than that match right there. Right. Like, dramatically. Yeah, it was yeah. boring. Like, I've got man. two points, so I'm going to stall this out for yeah. five and a half minutes. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, uh, so I hate to say it, but that final with Victor Schema and <laughs> Marco Sosa. Like, I like both guys. Yeah, yeah. But, man, Sosa very got on top, and he did absolutely nothing the rest of the match. I don't mm -hmm. agree with that either. That should have been penalty, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, Estimo was fighting hard and putting in work, you know? These guys might come after me hunting in my head later, but look, man, come on. <laughs> you got to pass, man. You got to pass, too. So this is that, that's my, my thoughts on, on that subject of the, of the new developments in our sport. That's awesome. That's awesome. Any last words, anything, any, any shout-outs or last words? Where can people find out more about you and your team? Man, uh, come visit us, Sacramento, California. We are wrecking shop out there. I brought back with the team – of like 21, 22 guys, we brought back an IBJJF title to Sacramento for the very first time making history in Sacramento. Uh, I'm really proud of my guys that put in a lot of work. You know, I, I, I lead like much like the General Mark Anthony uh, by shedding blood with my soldiers. So I'm very happy to be in, in that type of environment and, and, and we have a fantastic environment. If you can make it out to Northern Cali, please come by. We'd love to have you guys. Uh, YamasoBJJ.com is the website. You can follow me on a Twitter at Marcos Yamaso. Y-E-M-A-S-O. And you could also follow me on Facebook under Yamaso as well. Or just shoot me a, a personal one, my, my personal page too, man. I, I accept everybody. And, uh, you know, shoot me a ring. Get at me. I'm, you know, I'm always on the mats. I teach every class. Uh, with the exception of coming out here now that I'm in New York, right? I can't teach right now. But uh, shout-outs to my sponsors. Sam, NHB Gear. You're the man. You always help me out, man, since I was a little yep. I'm very appreciative for your help. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your help and support throughout the years, man. Um, Sam Kim. Also, with this this, this this most recent crisis that I had with, with the team affiliations, man, you were, you were a great person to speak with. Uh, Gilbert Jeff Pro Gear always hooking me up with the fat geese, man. I, I love that black Pro Gear. If you guys like a good light gi, it's a sick gi, man. Look at the, look at my picks. I've been rocking at a Pan Ams, Master Genius Worlds. It's a beast of a gi. Uh, my students, man, my students. Uh, you guys, you know, without you guys, my students and friends, my brothers, you know, like, uh, without you guys, I would not be one out right now. It's very simple, you know. I'd be sitting there doing drills on the dump, <laughs> and, uh, and I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. So thank you guys. Each, each and every one of you guys. I have a beast of a marketing guy, Ruben Avila. He's been, uh, if you guys need help with marketing, web page work, and stuff like that, he's been blasting information out, creating this huge web presence for us, man, making us, uh, just, you know, putting us out in the open. And we get a lot of people coming in, checking it out. They're like, oh, yeah, we saw you guys online and whatnot. You know, I'm very thankful for that help, too, as well. Uh, my cousin Hobbs is holding holding down the gym back home. My black belts. I think Kelly, Steve Tafoya, thank you guys for getting out there training. All my training partners, you know, Gordon Schroeder, uh, Marcus Bonesse, all these guys, man. Uh, Al Ramirez. I could just go on and on and on and on. But uh, God bless you guys. Thank you very much, man. I'm very fortunate to have each and every one of you guys in my life. And I'm very happy to be at this point in my life, I just feel everything's positive around me, you know, like, uh, I went through a lot of hard times here recently, you know, I, I changed it around, anybody can do that, man, you could, you could be going through a, a real shitty time at, at work, or I had a divorce, I had so many things happen in my life, and, uh, you, know, I, you know, the Jiu-Jitsu community is incredibly supportive, incredibly supportive, they brought me up from, from this little rut that I had, and man, look at me now, I'm not. Fighting, I'm all over the place. I'm training Marcelo Garcia right here in New York, and I'm kicking it with Sam Joseph, the Crusher. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. I appreciate it. Thanks, Thank thanks, Marcos. Awesome. Thanks. The enthusiasm, the passion. I hope you enjoyed that interview as much as I did. Yamaso is a competition beast who obviously loves jujitsu, loves his students, loves his life. I'll see you next time on Off the Mat with the Crusher.